It's holiday time! Hello. Don't forget the sunscreen and your passport. While you're getting ready for your week in the sun, there's lots going on behind the scenes to keep you safe and secure, both at the airport and once you're in the air. A lot of that work is done by the Civil Aviation Authority, or CAA for short. The CAA is a regulator, which means it's their job to oversee the aviation industry in the UK. They help to ensure we're looked after when we fly and even when we're down on the ground. Even before you get to the airport, they've made sure the plane you'll be flying in is safe, is maintained and was built properly in the first place. They make sure passenger aeroplane pilots are fit and well enough to fly and check the pilot's training, licences and that they are competent to fly. They also work hard to make flying as environmentally friendly as possible. The CAA looks after you before you get on the plane too, as they regulate airside operations. That's people like airport security, the people who check your tickets, people who load your luggage onto the plane, the people who make sure it has enough fuel to get to where you're going, and aircraft dispatchers who direct the plane on the ground. They even oversee the airport fire and rescue teams and air traffic controllers who tell pilots where to go and when they can take off and land. They are also responsible for airport perimeter security to protect against airport threats. Once you're on board, cabin crew are there to look after you and help to keep you safe while you fly. Yep, you've guessed it, they are regulated by the CAA too. Of course, it's always nice to come home from holiday but imagine if you couldn't because the airline you're booked on has gone bust. This means that the planes can no longer fly, but don't worry because the Atoll Protection Scheme from the CAA will help get you home safely. The scheme also protects people from losing money should things go wrong with their holiday. The CAA also makes sure that everything that flies, including drones, helicopters, gliders, hot air balloons, light aircraft, parachutists, vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, and even model planes all use the sky safely and follow important rules and regulations. The CAA regulates the airspace used by military aircraft too! One day, even commercial flights into space will be overseen by the CAA. Imagine being a space engineer and building rockets and satellites. What an amazing job! Now it's pizza time! all thanks to satellite-guided drone delivery. If you work hard at your STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering and maths, you could have a brilliant job working in aviation and aerospace. You might be up in the air, flying aeroplanes or down on the ground building and maintaining them. You could be keeping people safe at airports or designing rockets. You could even be working to reduce aviation's impact on the environment developing new ways of powering aircraft or minimising noise pollution. There are so many rewarding and fantastic careers! To find out more about jobs in aviation and how we can help, check out the CAA STEM page. Hello, my name is Ben Arcos and I'm the director of the UK CAA's International Group. We offer services and support to regulators around the world and to industry in the UK and globally to fulfil our purpose, which is to improve avi aviation standards. I'm also delighted that we're home to the CA STEM programme, which is why I'm talking to you today. Now, the last two years haven't been typical. So if we go back to 2018, air transport generated around 900 million tonnes of carbon dioxide. This may sound like a lot, but it's actually only around 2% of the 42 billion tonnes of CO2 generated by human activities every year. However, as aviation grows to meet increasing demand, particularly in fast growing emerging markets, and as other sectors of the economy reduce their emissions, aviation's share of overall emissions is bound to increase. And a growing greenhouse gas emissions footprint is unacceptable to any industry, which is why in aviation, from manufacturers to airports, to airlines, to air traffic management, to the regulators, we're working hard to limit greenhouse gas emissions. On greenhouse gas emissions, the CA will continue to play a role in the UK COVID recovery, green industrial revolution and strategic commitments to be a leader in the development of safe zero emissions flight, in line with the government's evolving policy for aviation sustainability. 
We'll do that by driving progress in the regulations we need to make it a reality, enabling innovators to develop sustainable aviation fuels and aircraft, and the aerospace industry to safely bring new technology to market. We'll consider the ways we could put more emphasis on decarbonisation in market-based measures, such as the United Nations Carbon Offsetting and Reduction Scheme for International Aviation, or Corsair, and create capacity building programmes to help other, other countries to reduce their environmental impact. Within our remit, we'll be clear about where we lead, where we support, and where we follow in order to achieve decarbonisation of the sector in line with the government's net zero by 2050 ambitions. And of course, we'll look after our own emissions. We have a plan to deliver a net zero CAA by 2035, for example, by improving the energy efficiency of our buildings and moving to an all electric car fleet. Stopping climate change is one of the biggest challenges the industry and the world is facing. The CA is committed to playing our part in reducing these harmful emissions. We'll do that where we have the regulatory powers to do so, in partnership with others who want to work with us, and by managing our own greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you. We know aviation has an impact on our planet. Here at the Civil Aviation Authority, CAA for short, we're determined to do all we can to reduce this impact and to find sustainable solutions and practical ways to protect our planet as much as we can. Whether it's at a local level through noise pollution and air quality, or more global issues such as how aviation is affecting climate change, it's something we and the industry are determined to address. We're aware and we care. Let's look at noise pollution first. Check out this noise. How did it make you feel? Can you describe it? Sounds are vibrations, small changes in air pressure which move through the air before being detected by our ears. Noise is often just unwanted sound. Unless you're into heavy rock music, of course. As you can see in this chart, we can detect a huge range of sounds, from the clanging of a ship's engine room to a whisper in a library, and everything in between. We measure this sound pressure level in decibels. A decibel is what's known as a logarithmic quantity, meaning we can use it to measure all the noises we can hear. A jet engine could be around 120 decibels, if you're standing close by. How about this noise? Someone snoring beside you could be around 40 decibels, or, in some cases, much, much louder. Noise can impact us as people in lots of ways. It could be annoying, keep us awake at night, and affect our health. Did you know that exposure to too much noise can cause brain, heart and other health problems? Noise from aircraft can also affect farm and wild animals and impact on biodiversity. Health factors can be one of the things which help to decide where new runways and airports should be built. As you might expect, Aircraft noise comes from the roar of the engines and what's called jet noise, the noise of the airflow leaving the engine. Air pressure fluctuations from around an aircraft's wheels and wing flaps also cause noise. And don't forget all the noise at an airport, from planes waiting to take off and all the airport vehicles driving around. Noise from airports is shown using noise contours it's a bit like the isobars on a weather map. Each line on the chart represents the same level of noise. This chart shows the noise around Heathrow Airport on a busy summer day. You can see how things get noisier the closer you get to the airport. Charts like this are used to track how noisy it gets at airports, over seasons, months, or even from single regular flights. In fact, we're using loads of cool tech and exciting innovative solutions to measure and tackle noise pollution. So how do we control noise pollution? 
Most of the aviation industry uses the International Civil Aviation Organization, or ICAO for short, balanced approach. It covers how to reduce the noisiness of the aircraft themselves and how to manage affected land, noise, abatement steps and, as a last resort, restrictions on flights and airport use. Now let's take a look at air quality. It's another issue which can affect local environments. But how can we control it and, of course, reduce it? What is air pollution? Air pollution is when chemicals get mixed in with the air we breathe. It can be very harmful to us and to animals and plants. The biggest cause of air pollution in Europe comes from cars, lorries and other petrol and diesel road vehicles. They churn out pollutants like carbon monoxide, which can make people very ill. That's why pollution levels are closely monitored and recorded, especially in cities and big towns. Air pollution is measured by recording how much pollution is in a sample of air, as parts per million or micrograms per cubic meter. From that recording, an emissions factor can be worked out, showing the amount of pollution activities such as driving, etc. are causing. Poor air quality can be very bad for our health and for the health of animals and plants. Short-term exposure can cause coughing, sore eyes or a tickly throat, while people with asthma, older people and those with lung or heart problems can be badly affected. That's why it's so important for us to invest time, money and our expert knowledge into finding solutions. In aviation, pollution comes from aircraft engines and airports, the cars, buses and vehicles using airport roads, and the energy used to heat and power airport buildings. Unburned hydrocarbons, HC, nitrogen oxides, NOx, carbon monoxide, smoke, non-volatile particulate matter. These are some of the main pollutants from aviation. They can cause smog, breathing problems and can affect water quality too. That's why airports constantly measure pollution and publish the findings in a real-time air quality health index. How do jets cause pollution? An aircraft's engine sucks in air, compresses it and mixes it with fuel before igniting it. This causes the air to heat up and expand and blast out the back of the engine to drive it forward, expelling pollutants at the same time. Here at the CAA, we're working alongside the aviation industry to tackle pollution caused by flying. We're looking at improving aircraft and engine designs, changing aviation fuel and how it's used, and changes in how the industry operates. Pollution has a big impact on climate change too. It's the topic of our time, and we must do everything we can to stop its damaging effects. You might have heard about greenhouse gases and the greenhouse effect. Greenhouse gases trap heat inside our atmosphere. While they are perfectly natural and required for a healthy planet, we have generated too much of them and they are heating our world through something called the greenhouse effect. There is so much work going on and huge projects underway to try and stop the worst effects of climate change around the world. The United Nations operates a group called the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC. It looks at all the science around climate change, advises decision makers about the future risks of climate change and puts forward possible solutions. It puts together regular assessment reports about the climate. The next one is due this year. Climate change reducing targets have been set over the years at Kyoto in 1997 and in Paris in 2015, which aim to keep global warming to below two degrees. Shipping and aviation causes around 5% of all harmful emissions and greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise. It's essential for us all to learn more about our environment so we can understand how we can save it. 
Did you know? One ton of aviation fuel is equal to 3.16 tons of CO2. And one ton of CO2 is equal to a return flight from London to Boston. The volume of a ton of CO2 is the same as a 10 metre sphere. There are lots of ways in which the CAA and the wider industry are tackling climate change caused by aviation. The IKO has set targets to reduce CO2 emissions by 2% every year, while ensuring the actions taken by the industry are more carbon neutral. The industry is doing that through things such as introducing more sustainable aviation fuel and improving airport technologies. Quiz time! Question. In 2019, before the pandemic, approximately how many flights happened worldwide? Answer. Almost 40 million flights were expected. That's more than 100,000 trips per day. Did you get it right? Question. One person flying from London Heathrow to New York and back generates about 986 kilograms of CO2. How many loads of dirty laundry can be washed and dried for the same emissions? Answer. 299 for a load of laundry washed at 60 degrees Celsius then dried in a washer dryer which produces the equivalent of 3.3 kilograms of CO2. However, it's 1,643 for the same load washed at 30 degrees Celsius and dried on a clothesline, which produces the equivalent of 0.6 kilograms of CO2. We hope this section has helped you to understand the challenges we have as an industry to reduce our impact on climate change and all the things we're doing to address it. Perhaps one day you'll be using cool tech and innovative solutions as part of the exciting aviation industry to help us do everything we can to protect our planet. Bye! Bye. Hi, my name is Brenda Jeffcoat and I lead the STEM programme at the CAA. Thank you very much to Ed for joining us today. Would you kindly introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about your job at the CAA? Hi Brenda, and yes, I'd love to. Um, my name's Ed Weston. I'm Head of the Environmental Research and Consultancy Department at the Civil Aviation Authority. And we do everything related to modelling aircraft noise and greenhouse gas emissions. Well, that sounds like quite a fascinating job. Um, so with your knowledge and experience in this area, what role does the CA play in reducing noise impacts from UK aviation? Well, I should start off by saying that aircraft noise is mostly experienced by people who live close to airports, affected by aircraft taking off and landing. Um, and it's actually the UK government that decides what it considers to be an acceptable noise level um, from aviation. Um, and that's based on scientific research, often involving surveys uh, of, of real people asking them questions about their attitudes to noise from aircraft. So why do you think it's important for us to be focused on the wider environmental impacts of aviation? Well, firstly, we're witnessing an acceleration in climate change at the moment um, and, and its corresponding effects on the planet, uh, which are very detrimental. Um, there is no one thing that's going to fix the problem. So the responsibility is on, is on everybody on this earth to play their part. Um, and that's true of the aviation industry. Safety and security around flying is obviously still crucially important, um, but the industry also must take responsibility to reduce climate change and it must take that responsibility seriously. If it doesn't do enough, of course, global temperatures will continue to rise beyond safe levels and the consequences are predicted to be pretty catastrophic for life on Earth. Um, what exactly is net zero and what is the net zero ambition? Good question. So net zero, is the target of completely negating the amount of greenhouse gases produced by human activity. Um, and um, it's to be achieved by two, two means, one by reducing the emissions in the first place, but also by implementing methods of absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And those two combined need to result in zero emissions. Um, on the ambition, in the UK, the government has committed to achieving net zero by 2050 at the latest. So what can airlines do 
more of to improve our environmental impacts on aviation? Well, to achieve net zero and to promote the sustainable growth of the aviation industry, the international organisation that's, that's responsible for sort of overseeing many of the aspects of global aviation, that's called ICAO, um, and it's pursuing four uh, measures to improve aviation's uh, emissions. The first one is technology improvements. So this is coming up with new techniques to power aircraft, like electric propulsion, hydrogen propulsion, for instance. Um, the second, but the second measure is operational improvements. So this is flying the aircraft more efficiently, um, improving how airspace is used so that aircraft can fly the most efficient routes and most fuel efficiently. The third one is developing and uh, rolling out sustainable aviation fuels, making fuels that aren't based on fossil fuels, but maybe energy from waste um, and potentially crops, although those carry their own detrimental effects on the environment as well, but fuels made from non-fossil fuel sources. And the fourth measure is, is called market-based measures. So this is making setting up arrangements within the sort of economic systems around the world to incentivize um, uh, reducing carbon emissions effectively. Um, the airlines have a big part to play in this, but it is for all parts of the industry to act to achieve net zero for aviation. It's a really fascinating area and what a fascinating job you have. How did you get into a career like this? Well, um, you're taking me back now. So. Uh, um, when I was at school, I loved music and maths and physics. Those, those were my favourite subjects. So um, I, I wanted to pursue a career that combined all those three things. So acoustics was what I was drawn to. Um, and, and that is around noise control, but also designing buildings to be um, great for sound. Um, and also, uh, you know, protecting people from neighbourhood noise, all sorts of things like that. So I started working for a consultancy in that field, doing all kinds of work, but it was the aircraft uh, noise consultancy that I enjoyed the best. Uh, working at airports, going out onto the runway and the, the aprons with the sound level meter, measuring noise from aeroplanes that I absolutely loved. So, uh, so I just, just chose to specialise in that. And since then, I've gone from noise um, moving into the other environmental effects like greenhouse gas emissions as well. What advice would you give to others interested in a similar career path? Okay, so so my role is quite technical. Above all, be curious. So learn as much as you can about the environmental impacts of aviation um, and sustainability in general. Um, and look into the new and exciting ways that we're beginning to reduce and hopefully eliminate these impacts. Um, technology is moving very quickly. So, so, so the, the people who know the most about the latest developments will we'll be in the best position to succeed. Amazing. Um, one final question for me. In your opinion, what does the future look like for the environment in the aviation industry? Like, can aviation really be environmentally friendly? Well, aircraft, as we know them today, uh, will need to be powered by uh, non-fossil fuel powered engines in the future and lots of research is going on at the moment into making electric and hydrogen propulsion aircraft a reality. Um, in the meantime, as I mentioned earlier, sustainable aviation fuels are being phased in to replace fossil fuels, um, but this will only go as quickly as the sustainable fuels can be supplied, and it's not easy to make these uh, at the scales that we need them just yet. So as long as aviation is releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, I don't think that we can say that it's environmentally friendly. However, if we can indeed develop these new technologies and propulsion systems that can be powered 100% by renewable energy sources, then I think we could definitely say that aviation could at least be net zero. Brilliant. That's been fantastic. Thank you very much for your time today, Ed. What a really informative uh, and exciting to see what the future can bring in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. It's been a pleasure.